one more thing um, a couple more things we have alignment we can align the text several different ways um, if I want to align this text I can do it several ways I can do left right center or justify and so if I'm going to text align it's going to align the text to the center so you can see all of them are actually already centered so that's what it did automatically if I did text align left you can see that they'll all come to the left of the paragraph and butt up to the left side if I do text align right it'll do the same thing it'll butt to the right if I did justify it's not really going to do a whole lot right now because justify has to do with the the area when there's multiple lines but it'll it'll stay left of course because justify is more an issue of the surrounding the multiple lines but those are your options for text align so I'm just going to stay with text align left for now refresh that so we have one more element that I want to show you which is the vertical align element uh, is the vertical align style it's a little bit more tricky than the um, text align element which just does a horizontal aligning to the left right or the center or justify the vertical align isn't as easy as as it should seem um, but you have the option of a vertical align that your values could be top middle bottom uh, text top baseline and text bottom those are the options um, and I just want you to know that right now it, we're not going to really deal with that just yet but that's something to keep in mind as as you go forward in the future and then the last element we're going to discuss is the float property and the float property is where we start talking about how to butt the divs up to the left or right side of a document so what happens is the float allows elements to be moved around a design a, a div so other elements can wrap around them um, this is commonly used with images um, and the possible values are pretty straightforward it's left or right you can float a div on the left or the right so they of course only float horizontally because we're talking about um, floating up next to each other to the side so if I wanted to float something left I would want to float a couple of them left so if I do the A1 and A2 only and I refresh it you'll see that A1 and A2 float right up together now the interesting thing about the float left element is that if you don't float all these elements you're gonna get some stuff sitting behind it and we'll talk about how to clear that out of the way in just a minute but you can see now I'm floating them all left and div 3 has got a huge margin on the very uh, on the left top right bottom left remember here's the margin for a4 so it's got a really big margin and so if this document was big enough it would still float to the left but it doesn't because it's not big enough so you have to keep that in mind when you're doing a a div that floats left and if your browser isn't big enough it's just gonna butt up um, is at the best of its ability so you want to keep that in mind with a um, mobile design or a design that's going to be created for multiple platforms referring to a website or a mobile website or a mobile application or an iPad uh, application and the different kinds of uh, platforms you can uh, use so in this case if I wanted them to be more uniform let's just go back to 20 there and you can see a lot better example if I have a smaller arrangement now I'm just going to go back to um, 25 pixels right now for all these so you can see at least for the margin so they all have 25 margin 
on the divs themselves, except for div number three, which I've missed. So there's the div. Margin 25 pixels. So now you've got margin of 25 pixels. And you'll see that this is 25 here, but this is a total of 50 because you have double 25, 25, and 25 because you're doing a margin right for the blue div and a margin left for the red div. So you can see how they all butt up together that way. Now if I wanted to float something to the right, I could do that. If I take this red document, this red div, and float it to the right, you can see now it's floated to the right and it's at the margin of 25 pixels both at the top and the and the right so it's floated to the right now if I move that around you can see the orange one will come in here and sneak up in front of this document of the uh, the red div and that's because I have this red div now it's floated to the right so everything's just gonna reformat to the left because these three are all fl floated to the left and this red one's floated to the right okay so you can see how that works. Now, uh, one element that is important is called clear. And with clear, we can have a few different values. We can we can have um, left, right, both, and none. Of course, none is the default, so we don't typically say clear none. But it's common to have clear left, right, or both. Um, what will happen is this allows you to avoid elements floating around the object that the that the property is placed on. So like if I place the clear both on the background color red div, you can see how it clears the elements on the first that's above it. So here's the element that's above it, div 1. If I move this element let's see if I move it here what happens so you can see now I just move that element down to uh, I move replace two and three and now it's clearing both of those elements but if I take that element and put it back it's just gonna clear both left and right that's above that element so if I just said I want to clear the left side only you can see that I'm only clearing elements on the left side if I clear the right side it should butt back up to the blue one because there's no elements there since I'm floating it right so it's clearing everything over here but it doesn't have to clear anything on this side because I've specified that so it's just gonna look the same as before now if I change this float back to left save it, refresh it, you'll see that these still are going to float to the right because they are not in front of the red div. But if I do that, then you'll see how they switch spots. So learning how this works is a matter of getting here in here and messing around with the clear and the float. Um, and you can see how the float property and the clear property are pretty valuable um, as far as aligning your page and getting images and divs to butt up next to each other um, evenly or not proportionally. It can make for a very interesting document and um, a lot of fun. So this concludes the video. In the next video, we're going to discuss some of the finer details of the CSS box model, and we'll wrap it up.